you ever thought about wood? I think about wood all the time. Lucky for me, my friend Eden is a furniture maker and woodworker and knows all about wood. And today we're going to assess the skill and the rigor of the, crap, the woods craftsmen in the land of Skyrim. Well, so what I was gonna say about these is that it looks like they're screws because they have like a, a square socket to drive a screwdriver in. Right. Which doesn't make sense because you would use nails for this and also they're f***ing huge. Go to the, the guard's they, foot. They, they're like the size of his <laughs> foot. They're massive. <laughs> All right, first and foremost, let's talk about Jarl Balgruf's chair. It's an iconic chair, beautiful, from my perspective, beautiful, uh, woodworking. Uh, but what are you seeing here? Um, I'm seeing some good and I'm seeing some bad. What we're seeing here is, as far as I can tell, there is no actual joint connecting the arm to the back. What is a joint? Uh, a joint would be a place where two pieces of wood meet generally in a manner that allows them to uh, intersect each other, creating a, a mechanical bond. As far as I can tell, that is just glued to the side of the back of the chair, which is not going to create a lot of strength. Uh, what are all these little dots? Man, that's hard to tell, isn't it? <laughs> I, woof. It, it kind of looks like nails, maybe, but there would be no reason for there to be nails there. Could just be decoration, though. It, it might be decorative carving, you know, which I could be into. Talk to me about the legs. So they're kind of in keeping with a with a style that we historically know as cabriole legs, which, um came over from China in, I want to say, the 1700s. Don't quote me on that, necessarily. So on a scale of, let's say, if you were like a teacher grading this A, B, C, D, F, what would you give this chair in terms of like, I guess, let's say, realism? Right. Um, so it looks like the, the way the legs are constructed looks like they're probably a frame, mortise and tenons around, which is a very classical chair construction. That makes a lot of sense to me. Everything other than the weird connection from the arm to the back um, makes perfect sense. I'll give it a B minus. Not B minus. A B minus. Not bad. I'll say there could be pegs coming internally from the inside of the rail. So I'll so give it possible? a B minus. Okay. It's possible. Right. Yeah. It's possible. All right. Now next up we're in solitude, and we're going to talk about these beams. Talk to me about these beams. Uh, from what I'm seeing, this bottom beam looks great to me. What do you think? Um, I think I think it's good. We're off to a good start. The beam itself looks really good. They did a really good job of getting that look uh, that wood gets when it's really weathered. You know, people might have thrown axes at them, jump scare, right. um, <laughs> over the years. But uh, that's people definitely might have a factor. Axes at that's them? definitely a factor. Just, I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? It is Skyrim. That's true. It so. is Skyrim. People might have used it for target right. practice. Any number of things. Now, talk to me about the woodworking that I'm seeing here, because I've got we got some beams or some squares up there. Right. I've got so, some weird triangle bits. This is where things. Get a little dicey. Aye, aye, aye. I'm having some issues here. It's not necessarily clear how these pieces of wood are being connected, right? We can see some nails on the um, on the inside curves there of these uh, sure, of, of right these there, right. braces, so to speak, connected to the larger pole. But unless those nails are just, they be they have to be really long. They have to be super, have to be so super, long. super long. Right, exactly. Could they be decorative nails? They absolutely almost have to be decorative <laughs> nails. As do the nails on the uh, on the flatter faces. Um, we can see here those. Oh three yeah, nails, what are those right? even doing? They're not doing anything. They're just going through the wood. I suppose it is it possible that is this is multiple pieces of right? Wood? But it why might would you be, do that? Exactly. We, we know that in Skyrim we have very thick pieces of wood. You can so see this one right here. This exactly. Big it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Although it does kind of look like that's what's happening. So maybe it was just they. They just know. had they to just... nail together these three pieces of wood. I'm not sure. For some reason. But that still doesn't actually tell us at all how it's connected to the beam. I have a theory if you want to look at the side of the beam again. I mean, it, not... it looks there, oh, right there. Like uh, at the bottom, like we have some piece of iron. Okay. Right. Uh, that might be connecting the wood to the, or you know, the, the curvature of the braces to the beam itself, but it might be underneath the brace, you know, kind, sure, of, sure, kind sure. of as a hinge, and that's what those two uh, nails very at right. the right bottom of the brace are. But if that's the only thing connecting this brace to this big yeah. piece of wood, it's just, this, this it's house just is not in, doing it's it for gonna me. Collapse. Right, it's going to collapse in No question. Seconds. This woman is in trouble. She's, oh, absolutely. She's in danger. I'm, uh, I'm curious about these. We see these kind of square pegs at right. the top. What are those? I don't really know what, what are purpose they're serving. To? In fact, it looks... Yeah, almost what? like they're not really interfacing with anything. See, it's yeah, kind of off not to even the lined side. Up. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. yeah, it must be purely decorative. And it does look nice, but 
I mean, it's kind of an odd choice, you know. They're not right, actually they're not even, even center, they're not so even like center. if it's decorative, what's going <laughs> on? A- okay, so in total, uh, this whole structure, I'm not feeling good about it. But what would you say? What what would you give it? It gets a, a D plus. Oof. It's an F if it weren't for the right. sign. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about this executioner's block. What are, what's going on here? So um, it appears to be a block of wood. It is cut in the short grain, so to speak, which is a little odd, but it is thick enough that it's not gonna matter from a structural perspective. What I mean there is you can see the grain is running up um, up and down from our perspective. Right. Um, which just means you would have to cut it out of a wider tree than if the grain were running across it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but so what? one of the things I'm seeing here is that you've got the grain Mm-hmm. going up on the side but yeah. then it goes this way on the top yeah and i think that might be a rendering issue okay um, like they just have a texture for wood i think right? they just have the wrong texture yeah that should look like end grain which would look different right and if it was cut out of a tree it'd be circly well exactly you would have more circular depending on the size of the tree it could it could be a huge it, exactly you know because the diameter of the circle would allow it to look kind of straight but right um, so if you were to rate the executioner's block i give it a C. C. All right, next up, we're going to talk about the Ulfric Stormcloak's dining table. All right, so I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of good. Okay. But I'm also seeing some, some wacky stuff. All right. Uh, one thing I really want to point out is the ends here. Um, you see how we have this board running across the end? Right here. That carved board right there? Yeah. yeah. That's a, called a breadboard end. And um, what's going on there is that these long boards coming towards us are tenoned. You know, we've been talking about the mortars and tenons. And that board is sitting there so that these longer boards don't bend and twist as oh. moisture and humidity affects the movement that's of the wood. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? So that's actually a pretty... So you're saying if this wasn't here, and that's why like old camping tables get all... Done. That's exactly. You've probably seen an old picnic see, table or I something have. that's all bent all to fight. Right. So they they needed a breadboard. Exactly. Uh, what would you call it? Bread a breadboard end. end. Breadboard yeah. end. Right next to the breadboard end, we see these weird little nubs that are just kind of sitting. These thingies, just like sticking out. Yeah. The, uh, now those are connected with a joint, which I appreciate. The issue is that they are, don't have any reason to be there. So they got them on the bench too. They got them on the right. bench too. So it might be decorative. There's, you know, one thing we don't know is about the kind of cultural history of design in right, Skyrim. True. This might have a, some yeah. kind of older purpose. There are plenty of examples of things in uh, in, in history where uh, at some point this might have served a purpose to maybe hang your your axe on or, or sure. you know, hang oh, right. something yeah. off of. And, Anthropology, and, Anthropology coming exactly. through. Exactly, okay. and at this point it's just kind of a decorative right. feature. Now something else I want to talk about is the joinery on the underside of the table, uh, the legs here, so to speak. Um, now I'm seeing a lot of good here. One thing, um, we can see this stretcher, which is the very long, thin piece of wood running the entire length. You can right see here. it there. Yeah. Yeah, which is coming through the end of the legs. Right. One thing uh, is historically in uh, Earth, we would see that little nub. That, that is actually a tenon, if you imagine that's coming through a mortise. And I those see. Legs, as okay. we've talked so about. This is, the, this is an x ray version of the exactly. penetration moment. We're yes, seeing. That's the penetration what did you say? A mortal and a mortal mortise and, pestle? and tenon. Mortise a mortal and tenon. Mortal and pestle. So that's what the, this is a support structure. Sort exactly. Of right? Yeah. So that is a tenon okay. coming through. The thing itself would be called a stretcher. Gotcha. Um, and historically, a lot of times in um, in the real world, we would see a wedge going through that bit of tenon that's sticking out, gotcha. which would allow you to take that wedge out and then dismantle the entire table, Right. Okay. which has a lot of utility historically, Right. Um, especially for kings and such who were often itinerant, so would be picking up all of their stuff and moving it to ah. a new city from time to time. Oh my yeah. gosh. So when I first was thinking about how this table sucked, I was looking at these nails. And I'm like, all right, so those are maybe like just to help you not slide around and get too close to somebody, right? Sure. I mean, that could be an argument for it, I guess, right? If, if there's a kind of... It's like when you're on a sidewalk and you've got those things you on the thing those, to make so you sure don't, you don't slip right. and get your legs wrong. Or maybe, over. I mean, we, you know, we could say that there's kind of a, a, a tradition in, in Skyrim of getting up on the bench and doing a little dance. True. This would help you keep your foot in. All right, so in total, uh, it's Ulfric Stormcloak's table and benches. What are we thinking? A, are we thinking? I'm feeling like a B. I'm, uh, I'm thinking B plus. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a B plus. I'm going to give it a B plus. All right, welcome to the creme de la creme, the final, the final showdown. Are you looking at your phone right now? No, never. 
I thought it would take longer to load. Okay, so let's talk about Miko's cabin. We're gonna do outside first, then inside, all right. okay? This is all wood. At first glance, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing, I think. Yeah, actually, I am liking what I'm seeing. No, closer <laughs> we can. Can I ask a question? Sure. Why does all the wood in Skyrim just have random nails in it? Right, that's a great, great question. I'm, I now know that, what's the point of these nails? I don't know. you come around and the back see, here, and it's, it's just, just wood. the same board. All you're doing right. is putting nails in wood for what? For literally no reason. Right. Uh, and it's kind of driving me insane at this point. This is really bothering me, actually, because we can see that the board ends and then a new board starts. Right. But that means that that end of the board is just hanging in space, right? There are nails in it, but right. the nails aren't going anywhere. That doesn't make any... So, so it's the, not connecting to anything. They should be anything. nailed to the log. They should be nailed to the log, exactly. What is going... This it is insane. Make any sense. This is right. insane. Exactly. The framing itself is good. The in, inside part's... Not so much. All right. Any thoughts on the shelf here? Um, shelf looks good. Generally right? looks pretty good. Yeah. Any it, random nails? Uh, yeah. I'd not see any random. Which nails, Which is weird because that implies <laughs> they have a texture without all the without random nails. All the random nails, and they, they could be used. What are all these holes? Those are knots in the tree. Yes, and we can see. Um, and I think this is an interesting touch because we can see that they're they're using really oh, yeah. uh, rough timber on the rails. It almost right. looks like just a. A tree, the bark still yeah, on it right almost, here, right? Yeah. And that kind of implies that this was made um, by a, a country craftsman, maybe someone who's not even really a craftsperson. And we can see that on the end of that table back there that they didn't even fully cut it to length. You know, that's a very uh, rough you know shot. What? You know what this doesn't have? What? A little bread. Bread, it doesn't have bread a breadboard end. Porch, it's bread right. end. It, boom, boom. Right. Uh, but we, we can expect that to maybe uh, do some serious warping over time, especially considering, and this is another thing I should have mentioned about the house itself, no insulation. There's nothing filling the cracks between these boards. Well, I mean, look up there. I mean, oh, the roof's even worse. Yeah, this, this right, place is a mess. Roof. Let's talk roof. So once again, we have these kind of square pegs, or rectangular pegs even, that don't seem to be interfacing right. with in what they theory, should be. In theory, it's supposed to be. Right. But in, in that case, there'd be one for each. Right, right exactly. And and some of the pegs are going directly in between the boards. So the Is roof it possible the that tightest. there used to be a, like a second roof over the roof that these pegs were attached to? Maybe. I you don't know, know why you why would... why would you have all these slots? Right. So it rains and snows. Exactly. You know? If anything, the So maybe there was like a have... big roof on yeah. top of it. That you could sound be like the you case. don't believe it. I mean, I just, I don't know why there would be this shittier roof under the big <laughs> roof if, if that were just the case. Just a backup. Right? It's a backup. Just in case. Yeah, it's like a convertible. I'm kind of into the bed. We're Ooh, seeing... look at this little dealio there sticking right. out on the edge. We're seeing some more through tenons there, right. which is a really nice touch. And, and also to cut a through tenon there, we're not seeing a lot of gaps in the joint, although it is, it is not the highest texture quality. You know what I like about this? What do you like about it? You can see the circle of the tree yeah, so and the grooves of the wood there. That's pretty good. We talked about the end grain better over here. earlier Look with the... Look um, at that. Right. That's gorgeous. And where was that texture on the executioner's block? Right. That's my question. You I can, see. Okay. That's, those are the growth So they had the texture. About. It's right. available. They, it, just didn't use it. They just didn't, didn't use it. Didn't use it. Come on, guys. So in total, if you had to give one rate... Okay, let's all separate into two things. Number okay. one, the furniture in Miko's okay. farm or whatever, Miko's cabin. What would you give the furniture? I'm going to give it a solid B. And then let's talk about just the the house. Yeah, the house is going to get a C minus. Really? I'm surprised it's that high. We actually even talk about the floor at all. The floor looks pretty bad. I might. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, you know what? Actually, Austin, I'm going to have to give it a D plus. Wow. Because we looked it, at the floor. The, it's just not making a lot of sense to me. Oh. So in summary, the skilled furniture maker that you are, what would you say about Skyrim's wood? What what rating would you give it? Same rating scale, A, B, C, D, F. Um, I was gonna give it a C minus, but since you're not giving me the minus option, I will give it a solid C. A C for Skyrim. A C for Skyrim. That's pretty, um, that's not bad. You know, it's not, it's not bad. bad. So why a C? What was good? What was bad? Just a couple of quick points. What are, what are the big takeaways? Big takeaways, um, Ulfric's table, right. pretty good. Did a lot for me, especially those breadboard ends. Barrel and the bed in Miko's cabin. Right. Really good for me. I enjoyed those a lot. Just some of the other textural details of the wood. It, it really it really has the feeling of wood, which I like. And the bat. Random nails everywhere. Right. Uh, boards ending in the in middle space, of nowhere. Yeah, just right. out in space. Didn't make a lot of sense. It's, it's, I mean, that's why I get to see it. It's, it's right in the middle. You know, it's got some, some really good aspects. And it's got some, some pretty horrendous aspects. And speaking of C's, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, shut up. 
Please leave a comment down below saying that you liked it. And if you want to support Eden, you can contact them on Instagram. Or just find me on this. You don't have to contact me to support me. True, that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. And lastly, I've got one more thing to say. Uh, in my free time, I make a lot, a lot of music. I use that music in all my videos. And in about five seconds, you will hear one of those songs. If you don't like it, click one of the videos on the screen. Go to another video. That helps me a lot too. And until next time, uh... You pick 11 people, pull out number 12 and I'm